A blessed morning to each and every one sa lahat po ng ating mga viewers at sa buong mundo, sa buong Pilipinas mula Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao at buong Pampanga, especially sa Santo Tomas at San Fernando and even sa Angeles, sa El Shalom and City Sanctuary. We are declaring a blessed morning to each and every one of you. By the way, I'm Pastor Junel Liwanag. At uh, nagpapasalamat po ako sa Panginoon because today the presence of God is right here in this place. At alam niyo po ba that the very presence of God, ito'y dumadaloy sa bandwidth dyan sa internet. And it is flowing from this place down to your home. And the very presence of God will change our minds. Amen. So this morning before I'm gonna pray, nice ko muna pong i-acknowledge lahat ng ating mga viewers. Okay? And I wanna do a shout out right now. Sige po, I'm gonna check sino ba unang-una. Uy! All the way from Zambales. Welcome, Casey, Kevin Fonseca. Wow! Princess Joy Dimal. Kasama po si Aljon. Wow! Ito po, nauna pangatlo. Pastora Rochella David. One of our faithful disciples sa church natin. Po, the faithful one. Tawag ko po sa kanya. Sister Reina, dyan sa RP Palad. Uy, Robert Kison. Uh, Tizon, I may say. Okay? Melissa Gutierrez. You know, I want to acknowledge also the Taruk family. Okay? You know why? Kasi alam ko po na ngayon nanunod sila lahat. And I'm very excited that something will happen in your life. Si Princess Joy Dimal. Yes, Marlen Rivera. Weng Katanduanes, all the way from Lubao. Praise God. Okay, Ems, of course, my mother, Pastora Melba, and my wife, Pastora Malu, kapatid ko, si Pastora Jen. Daddy Pastor, God bless you. Shout out to you. Amen. Wow, Ian, Nicole Ann. Oy, Pastor Alwin Mara, God bless you. Ah. Watch, tapusin mong message. This is important for all of us as pastors. Okay, Reynaldo Ledesma Pineda. All right, Nino, God bless you. Clarissa Castro. Dumandan. Praise God sa buhay po ninyo. Uy, Sister Mar Marian Basilio Roas, thank you for sharing. By the way, sa lahat po ng mga binabanggit ko ngayon, please share, okay, sa, sa inyong mga timeline. Begin to like and begin to share. Okay, ganito pong gagawin natin before I'm gonna continue itong shout out natin. In the count of three, lahat tayo magre-react, magla-like, okay, like and heart. Okay, are you ready? One, two, and three. Come on! Like, yan. Sige po, pintutin natin yan. Oh, I can see it. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Salamat po. Mahal ninyo at gustong-gusto ninyo ang gawain ng Panginoon. Praise the Lord. Pwede mong palakpaan muna natin ang ating Panginoon sa lahat ng mga nag-like, nag-heart, at nag-react. Now, in the count of three, this is very important because when you begin to share ang ating pong gawain sa ating pong, uh, sa inyong kanya-kanyang mga timeline and you begin to target yung mga kaibigan ninyo, mga kakilala, kamag-anak, and you begin to share it sa mga messenger nila, you know what? You are making a difference. Why? Because the Word of God, hindi po ito masasayang. And when your relatives, your family, na-receive po nila yung share nyo yan, nakita nila sa timeline ninyo ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa ating simbahan, believe me, my friends, your family, your loved ones will be saved. So in the count of three, are you ready? Okay. Pwede bang iangat natin yung ating mga cell phones o yung ating mga computers kung saan nyo man isi-share yan? In the count of three, okay? Lahat tayo mag-share sa timeline natin. Are you ready? El Shalom City Sanctuary. Three, two, one. Come on, begin to share it right now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sige, continue sharing. Praise God. You know what? I want to acknowledge Sister Eileen Montemayor, Rosette Kat Katanduanes, okay? Lemuel Santos, Uy Nikki Manyalak, Sister Shirley Pineda, all the way from RP Palad, Uy Nina Felipe. There you go, Renzo. God bless you. Kizi, Angeline Pineda, Maru, God bless you. Sino pa? Ang dami nila. Okay. Sino to? Jean Patricia Mangalus, Jasmine Kamasura. Wow, praise God. Uy, Jonah, kumusta na si Joshua dyan? Ha? Nanunod ba kayo? Amen. Okay, Colonel Vinluan, God bless you. Ano po? Shout out sa inyo sa buong pamilya. Sister Connie Espinosa, 
John David Canla. So yung mga Canlas family, God bless you. Amen. Jasmine. Oh, ulit na ulit ko lang. Brother Jeffrey de Guzman. Praise God. Ian. All right, Praise God. Dire-direcho ito. Maglalampasan ko ng konti. Elaine Luzano. Praise the Lord. Lady, Lady Sharina Navarro. Sino pa po? Guy Puno. Okay. Angelica Taruk. Praise God. Darwin Calma. Pastor Rigdon. Lahat ng Primary 12. Lahat po ng ating mga lahat po ng ating mga disciples sa El Shalom and City Sanctuary. And you know what? This is a special day kasi birthday po ni Sister April ngayon. So, you know, it's a special day. Siya po ang ating nag-o-operate sa ating computer at nagpapalabas ng mga verses. Kaya kapag may maling verse, may maling labas doon siya yon. Pero ngayon dahil birthday niya, purihin ng Panginoon, ano po, uh, palalampasin natin yan. <laughs> But anyway, it's a beautiful morning. Amen. I want everybody to stand up on your feet. Some of you, hindi ko po na shout out, but you know that our Father in Heaven right now, ina-acknowledge niya ang pagdating mo, panunood mo, pag engage at pag involve mo sa kanyang gawain sa umagang ito. The mere fact that you shared it, you liked it, nag- naglagay ka ng icon na heart, the Lord acknowledges that. Amen? So you know what? This morning, lift your hands as you're as you are standing on your feet. Father, we bless you. We honor you because you are good. Maraming yugto. Paiba-iba ang panahon ng aming mga buhay. But there is one thing for sure that in any season, in any phase of our lives. Jesus, you are with us. Lord, nakikita ko ang yung mga anak ngayon nakikinig. Litong-lito na sa mga yugto ng buhay. Mga pangyayari sa trabaho and even Lord sa kanilang mga pamilya and even in this time of pandemic and in the future there are many seasons that will happen but God, you will never forsake us. You will never leave us. Kasama ka namin sa lahat ng panahon ng aming buhay. That's why this morning, God, we will receive your word with an open heart. And as we begin to receive it, something good is going to happen in our lives and with our family. That's why, God, we want to bless you and we want to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And while you are standing up, I want to read the Word of God this morning. I want to go directly in the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. Okay? Pagbabasa po ako sa New King James Version. This is the story of Joshua when he met the angel of God. Okay? Ang sabi po ng 13 verse of Joshua 5, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked. I love this word, lifted his eyes. Because today we are going to lift our eyes to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Dapat lagi tayong nakatingin sa Panginoon. And behold, a man stood opposite him with his word drawn in his hand ang sabi dito, and Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? In verse 14, ito po ang sagot. So he said, No. But as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. So in other words, yung kausap niya dito is the commander of the army of the Lord. It's the type of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, And Joshua fell on his face. To the earth and worship, and said to him, "What does my Lord say to his servant?" Biglang nagpakumbaba ang commander ng bansang Israel sa commander ng army ni Lord. Verse 15. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, "Take your sandal off your foot, for the place you stand is holy." And Joshua did so. We may be seated in the presence of God. 
You know, this morning, I want to talk about a very relevant and a very important topic. I, I named it Faces of Life. O sa Tagalog, we call it Mga Yugto ng Buhay. Because the truth is, all of us, nakakaranas tayo ng iba't ibang panahon ng buhay. Lahat tayo nakakaranas ng iba't ibang yugto ng buhay. And in this particular chapter, in verse 13 to 15, you know, Joshua is about to conquer a land. And it is in Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. Okay, the next chapter, makikita natin sa verse 1, ang sabi dito, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. Okay, none went out and none came in. Walang puma, pumapasok at walang lumalabas. Why? Because sasalakayin sila ng bansang Israel. Now, listen to this. Verse 5 is about the encounter of Joshua to the, to the angel. And then, look at this, my friends, okay? In chapter 6, it is about now Jericho. So mula sa wilderness, papasok sila doon sa Jericho, which is the entry point of the promised land. Listen to me and look at me, please. There are many promises of God that are in store for you. Now, the question is, papasok pa ba dyan sa promise ni Lord sa buhay mo? You have to understand, my friends, that there are many faces in the, in the journey of Israel. So, makikita natin si Joshua, dinala niya ang bansang Israel sa journey, and in that journey, there is a new face, or there is a new season they will cross over and they are going to take the land. Okay? They are going to take the land. Now, when I talk about faces, everybody say the word faces. There you go. What is faces? Alam niyo po, a few years ago, I believe that was about six years or eight years ago, bumili po kami ng lote. I was single that time. And uh, I thought, you know, pag nag-asawa ako, kailangan magka- mayroon na kaming tahanan na itatayo doon sa lote na yon. So I went to a subdivision. They call it Ciudad de Hison, Okay? And right there sa Ciudad, nakita ko, no, binibuild pa lang yung subdivision na yon. Ang inumpisahan nila, yung, yung pinakahuling phase, they call it phase 3. Umpisa sila doon. Ano po? Papunta sa phase 2 and then phase 1. Ganun po ang pag-construct ng mga ng mga subdivision. Hindi naman phase 1 ka agad. Ano po, ang kanilang unang ibebenta yung nasa dulo, yung phase 3. And then 2 and then 1. And then nakita ko po, there are phases. Okay? Alam niyo po, every time na naglalakad kami doon, natutuwa ako kasi dito kami sa phase 1, si na mami pastora nasa phase 3. So, every time na merong mabibuild that time, ano po, binebenta yan, they will move to another phase. They will sell maybe phase two, and then they will say, sell maybe phase three. You know, there are many faces, mga yugto ng buhay, na pagminsan, tayo po ay nalilito na. What do you do when you are in a new phase of your life? Parang ganito yan. Dati, estudyante ka, and then nag-graduate ka, new face ng buhay mo. Magbo-board exam ka naman ngayon. And then pumasa ka sa board exam. Amen! Pagkapasa mo, ngayon mag apply ka at magtatrabaho ka. Dati, ikaw lang ang pinapakain ngayon. Ikaw na ngayon na susuporta sa pamilya mo. Remember that, students, okay? Yung lahat ng mga magtatrabaho, yung dapat unang sweldo mo sa nanay mo yan. Okay? Now, that's a new face in your life. What are you gonna do when you are in that place of a new phase of your life. God is going to move you from where you are into what He has for you. Dadaling ka talaga ni Lord sa mga faces ng buhay mo. So after mo na, ngayon nagtatrabaho ka, okay, now magliligaw ka na. At least dapat 26 years old above, okay? Linilinaw ko po yan, okay? 20 years old below, bawal, lumabas. Okay? Pero kapag ginawa mo yung sa classroom nyo, pwede ka na lumabas, di ba? <laughs> Joke lang po, mga patid. But in a new phase, okay, 
The truth, it, it is so frustrating sometimes. Nakaka-frustrate. Because we were designed by God not to stay in one level. Remember that, okay? Ang disenyo ng Panginoon sa bawat isa sa atin, we are not going to stay in one level. But the design of God for us is we will go from glory to glory. Paangat ng paangat, paganda ng paganda. You know, we started with one camera, dito po sa ating live stream, at uh, you know, yung cellphone lang po ni Boom Boom ang gamit namin. And then the next week, nag-isang camera naman po kami, ano, yung Panasonic with uh, a simple uh, capture card. And then another rig, naging two cam. And then another rig. You know why? Because we were designed by God. No, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. So in other words, ang mga faces ng buhay natin dapat paangat ng paangat. Why? Because we are yearning for more. We want to grow. Wala pa po akong nakita na bank teller na gusto niyang forever na bank teller. At least somehow gusto mong maging isang supervisor and you're aiming for the manager na managerial position. Why? Because sometimes we need to get out of our comfort zones. Why? Because we need to grow. Lahat tayo. Si Pastor Junel, I want to grow in my preaching. Po, ako'y isang batang pastor and I want to become, you know, a growing pastor in terms of the revelation and, you know, the understanding of the Word of God so that when I give it to you, pag ginuyay niyo yan, mga kapatid, masarap yan. Bakit? Dahil yan po ay nangkaring sa Panginoon na ang inyong pastor, ninanais niya na umangat at magpunta sa mas mataas na yugto ng buhay niya in terms of the Word of God. Amen. Sino dito yung nangangailangan ng breakthrough? In the face of your life. Why? Because litong-lito ka na. For example, okay, sino dito yung uh, kapampangan ka? Sa dalawang araw, okay, from ECQ, naging MECQ tayo, di ba? Wow, praise God! Okay na rin yun. Alam niyo po, ako po okay ako sa MECQ because I need to protect my family, our church. Mas maganda talaga. Then suddenly, sinabi nila GCQ. So lahat, ano ba talaga? MECQ o GCQ? So nagulo na. Okay, kasi mga yugto ng pandemic ito. These are the phases of this pandemic. And nung dineclare na M GCQ na tayo o general community quarantine, natulog na tayo. Paggising natin, MECQ na naman, di ba? Sabi ko, okay na. Kahit na ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, basta may barbecue. Mas masarap yun, no, mga kapatid. So, you know what? It doesn't matter anymore today if it's GCQ, MECQ, ECQ, okay? Barbecue. Lahat na yan, mga kapatid, okay na yan. What's important is we need to thank God that we are healthy. We need to thank God that our family are protected by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen po ba tayo doon? Sino dito yung na-frustrate ka? Because of this ECQ, MECQ na, alam niyo po, tinitingnan ko sa Facebook, yung mga tao, yung mga reaksyon ng mga tao, alam mo, mga iba nagmumura pa, nagagalit sa gobyerno. Yung iba naman, sabi nila, it doesn't matter, basta kami, hindi muna kami lalabas. You know, there are many perspectives. But more people are frustrated. Tingnan mo ang katabi mo, mukha bang frustrated yan? Ha? Frustrated ka ba? Listen to this. Look at my eyes. Frustration is from God. Ha? Pastor, gusto mo sabihin, pag na-frustrate ako, pag na-disappoint ako, galing kay Lord yun, you know why? Sometimes God will bring you into the level of frustration in the season, in the face of your life, so that you will shift. Mag-shift ka, pupunta ka dun sa new phase ng buhay mo. When you're frustrated, you want to go to the next level. From glory to glory, from faith to faith. Amen. So, there are places that I may call the place of frustration. It is a place of crossing over. Parang itong, mga, itong bansang Israel. From the face of wilderness, they will cross over to the face of the promised land. Are you there? 
Sino dito yung gusto mong maranasan? Yung promised land ni Lord sa buhay mo. But you need to separate from the wilderness. That is important. You need to separate from the wilderness and you need to separate from this struggle of life. There will come a time na itong wilderness natin to, itong pandemya na ito, itong nangyayaring problema sa atin ngayon, this will come to pass. It will definitely finish, okay? Because the truth is, this pandemic is temporary. Parang wilderness lang yan. But the promises of God are permanent. Yung promise land ng Panginoon sa atin, it is permanent. Kaya tingnan mo ang katabi mo na napo-frustrate ngayon. Tingnan mo ang katabi mo na parang, ano ba yan? Magkaka-boyfriend ba talaga ako? Magkaka-girlfriend ba talaga ako? Huwag kang ma-frustrate. Dadating ka rin sa promise ni Lord sa buhay mo. Amen. Praise God. Huwag ka lang masyadong maselan. No? Now, there are three things na nice kong ipakita sa inyo, Okay. There are phases of life, okay, na nagre, meron silang mga requirements. Okay, everybody say the word requirements. The phases of life, they have requirements. And the number one requirement, okay, I may say, when I was writing this down, is the power relationship. So number one, phases of life requires power relationship. Write that down. Kasi kung ikaw ay mag-iibang yugto mula sa ECQ, mag-MECQ, and then from MECQ, ikaw ay mag-GGCQ, mula sa yung pagiging binata, magkakaroon ka ng asawa, at nung nagkaroon ka ng asawa, magkakaroon ka ng anak, Pero nung nagkaroon ka ng anak, naging dalawa, naging tatlo, naging apat, naging lima, naging dose, G12 tayo. Mga yugto ng buhay yan. And did you know that in the phases of life, we need what we call power relationship. What do I mean with power relationship? It took a power relationship of Joshua. Si Joshua, siya po ang nagdala sa bansang Israel papunta sa lupang pangako. Kung, hindi, kung ano ang hindi nagawa ni Moses, nagawa ni Joshua. Why? Because he had an intimate relationship, a power relationship with God. Siya po ay nagpatira pa. In front of, that, in front of the commander of God's army, and he had a relationship. That's why you can never go to your promised land unless you have a power relationship with God. That's why I want, I want you to see this. Itong si Joshua dinala ang bansang Israel saan? Sa lupang pangako. Sino ang naglid sa kanila? Si Joshua. Sino ang merong relasyon kay Lord na napakalalim? Si Joshua. Israel will never get to the promise of God over that nation without Joshua na merong tinatawag na mas malalim at makapangyarihang relasyon sa ating Diyos. Are you there? And listen to this and look, at, and look into my eyes. Alam mo ba, that Joshua is the typology of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the type of our Lord Jesus that there is no way you are getting into the promises of God unless you go through Jesus Christ because John 14 verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Jesus. Jesus, he had a power relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit. They are the Trinity. Kaya nga po, Napaka-importante na maintindihan natin that when you have a Joshua in your life, pwedeng ma-unlock lahat ng mga magagandang bagay sa buhay mo. That's why you need to be with the right people. Amen? Tignan mo ang katabi mo. Yan ba yung tamang tao na kasama mo? Are you there? Because when you are with the right person in your life, kaya nga sinasabi ko to sa mga dalaga. Okay. Makinig kayong lahat, yung mga binata dyan. 
Hindi ko mo pogi. Okay? May presence of God yan. Okay? Hindi ko mo may pera. Pero yan ang, yan ang pipiliin mo. Kailangan piliin mo yung right person. Hindi mo kailangan ng perfect person because there is no such thing. Hindi mo kailangan ng, ng excellent person. You need the right person. And that right person has a power relationship with God. Look into my eyes. Si Junel, hindi po ako perfecto. Wala akong pera noon. Okay? Pero sabi ni Pastor Romalu, you are the right person to me. You may not be perfect. You may not be the, mo- the, the excellent person. But you are right for me. Alam niyo po, when the, when the two of us, we join together, dumaloy po yung anointing sa buhay namin. That's why it's important that you recognize your Joshua. You recognize your Joshua. You know why? Because without Joshua, Israel will never get into the new phase. Yung Israel, they will never get into the new phase of their nation. Hindi sila makakarating doon sa promises ni Lord, doon sa promise land. They'll never, they will never be able to break through, okay, sa walls of Jericho. But listen to me, because of a power relationship, you can enter into the promises of God. Kaya mga kapatid, we cannot earn it, we do not deserve it. It only comes through Jesus Christ, through the blood, and through the cross, through the resurrection, and through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we can enter into the promises of God in our lives. Everybody say amen to that. You know what? Power relationship matters. Si Pastor Junel, bakit sinasamahan ko ay yung mga taong babad sa salita ng Panginoon? For example, si Bishop Oriel, Pastor Roger, Pastor Cesar, Pastor Lawrence Kong, how, and the National Club, how come I, I stick with them? You know why? Because I know they have a power relationship with God. And they can bring me to a place I've never been before. Alam niyo po si Bishop Oriel, pinupuri ko ang Panginoon sa buhay niya. Because he brought me to places that I've never been and I've never seen all my life. Ako po ay galing sa Amerika, pero nandahil sa Joshua ng aking buhay, nakarating ako sa mga lugar na hindi ko pa napuntahan because of my leader. That's why my friends, be connected with your leader. Not only with Jesus Christ, of course, is number one. But also be connected with the authority that God has given you. So be connected with Jesus and be connected with the leadership that God has put in your life. Amen po ba don? Then you can enter the promises of God in your life. Amen. Samahan mo, Pastor Randy. Yung mga powerful, anointed na tao. Samaan mo sa Sergia, yung mga taong merong touch of God. Yung mga taong merong dream at merong pong vision. Samahan mo yung mga nagdi-disciple kapag ayaw nila sa discipleship. Kaibigan mo pa rin yan, pero wag mong sasamahan. Bakit? Mahahawa ka. Because when you are with people who has dreams and visions, okay, you will have a dream. So, ano yung point ko dito? If you do not have a dream, get around with somebody who is dreaming. Amen. Alam niyo po yung aking mga leader, si Bishop at si Pastora Jer. Meron silang pangarap at, na, at meron silang panaginip na ang bansang Pilipino, Pilipinas, I may say, at bawat Pilipino, ay mababago at makakakilala sa Panginoong Yeso Kristo. And listen to me, when you are with these people, God will use them to spark yun, something inside of you. And listen to this, when a, a new move, a new phase of life of God is about to happen in your life, either you will ignore it or you will make friends with it. Para sa akin, Kapag merong new move si Lord, kapag merong crossing over, kapag merong new face, I will make friends with it. 
Kung sinabi nilang from ECQ, MECQ, I will make friends with MECQ. Hindi ko pipilit yung GCQ. Amen. So, did you know that God, whenever He brings you to one place to another place, from another place to a new place, laging pinapalitan ni Lord yung diet mo. Sinditing handang mag-diet ngayong panahon na ito. Woohoo! So, tignan natin yung diet ng bansang Israel, okay? Because when God brings you to a new place, God constantly changes your diet. Now, look at me. Alam niyo ba, mga kapatid, na ang ating Diyos ay Diyos ng pagbabago, ngunit hindi siya nagbabago. Our God is a God of change, but He never changes. So, if you are a Filipino, if you are a Christian, adapt changes sa buhay natin. Alam niyo po ba na ang bansang Israel, tatlong beses nagpalit ng diet. So, puntahan natin yung phase one ng diet nila, okay? Ang phase one ng diet nila is about the food of bondage. We call it the food of bondage. Ano yung food of bondage na yun? It was in Egypt na ang kanilang kinakain ay leeks, garlic, and onion. Grabe mga kapatid, no? Bawang, sibuyas. Talagang specifically, yan ang sinabi ng Word of God. Nung nasa, nasa ilang sila, nagre-reklamo sila kay Moses at sabi nila, Moses, ano ba naman yan? Bakit naman puro man na? Wala nang bawang, walang sibuyas. Kasi yan ang kinakain namin sa Egypto. Listen, sometimes, God will change yung bawang na yan sa buhay mo at yung sibuyas na yan. Bakit? Nangangamoy na ang bibig mo. <laughs> I'm not talking about the physical bawang, okay? What I'm talking about right now is, siguro alam niyo naman, di ba, na kapag kumain ka ng maraming bawang, kumain ka ng maraming sibuyas, pag kinausap kita, hello, alam niyo, hindi pa ako linilayhans, may slain na ako sa hininga mo. <laughs> but, you know, what I'm talking here is a spiritual bawang. We call it a spiritual garlic and onion. Listen, I can tell you what is your diet in life. And I can tell you by what you are consuming. Ano ba yung kinakain mo? Maybe ang kinakain mo ay offenses. Ang kinakain mo ay bitterness, unbelief, doubt, fear, worry, and depression. Yung ini-input mo sa buhay mo, puro inis, galit, MECQ, GCQ, lahat nagagalit ka, post ka ng post sa cell, sa, sa Instagram or maybe sa Facebook, walang sap, walang ayuda, ano ba naman, walang relief, talagang walang darating. You know why? Because... You feed yourself with negative things. Kapag kung ano ang yung kinakain, yun ang lalabas na amoy sa bibig mo. Can you hear me? Kaya yung masyadong mga marereklamo, hindi po ako natutuwa dyan. Yung mga nag na, nasa Facebook, post ka ng post na alam niyo po, yung sap namin, ganito po, uh, yung, yung pong ayuda, wala po. Kapatid, kaya ganyan ang nangyayari sa buhay mo. Because they smell the stink from your life. Hi there. Listen, si Pastor Junel, I was in Egypt for 14 years. And whenever I go to Pampanga, I remember, dahil nandiyan po sa kamunduhan noon, You know, ibang-iba ako. Pag, pag nakikita ko yung mga taga-church, pag bumukas ang bibig nila, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then suddenly, pag ako naman ang nagsasalita, nagmumura ako. Alam niyo po, English pa yung mga mura ko. Ang pangit pakinggan, mga kapatid. Pag naisip ko yun, nasusuya po ako. Because I feed offenses in my life. I, I feed myself with, you know, worldly things. Kaya kung ano ang kinakain mo, I'm not talking about physical food. But whatever you intake in your life, it will come out of you. Kaya sabi ni Lord, from garlic and onion, I need to shift you to the new face of your life. If you are going to be used by me, sabi ni Lord, at if I'm going to bring you to the, to the place called the promised land, hindi po pwedeng amoy sibuyas at bawang ang bibig mo. Come on, my friends. You need to come out of that food bondage. Everybody say the word food bondage. 
yung pagkain ng mga uh, inaalinhan ng puro negatibong mga kaisipan at salita. Because the Word of God is clear in Romans 12 verse 2. Ang sabi po dyan, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What does it mean? Yung daw ipasok mo sa buhay mo ay yung mga bagay na hindi ayon sa sistema ng mundo na ito. You choose what is good, you choose what is acceptable and perfect then God will bring you to your promised land. Amen. So, this was the fa- first phase. Phase one, Egypt. Ano ang pagkain? Food bondage. Ano yon? Yung stinky. Yung mabaho. Yung mga lumalabas sa bibig. Puro mura, puro galit. Ha? Yung ang tawag mo sa, sa kapambangan, ang tawag mo sa asawa mo, matuwang babulok, bako na akin. Yung mga ganun, di ba? Lagi pong ginagawang joke yon. kasi hindi ko naririnig yun sa daddy at mami ko. Ang nanay at, at nanay at tatay ko po, alam po, very, ano po sila, very loving to each other. You know why? Because they came out of Egypt. And then the next phase was wilderness. In the wilderness, there is something called the manna. So sa phase two, okay, I'm gonna show you three phases or three diets ng, ano po, ng, ng Bansang Israel. Sa first phase, yung bondage food. And then dito naman, is the, they call it manna which means, what is it? Ano ba tong mana na to? Did you know that the mana is the bread of uncertainty? Okay? It's the bread of uncertainty. It is just, it is a bread that sustains, okay, while you are in the wilderness of your life. While you are wandering, yung hindi mo alam kung anong gagawin mo. Yung hindi mo alam kung anong mangyayari sa'yo ngayon. Yung wala ka ng pera, wala nang, you know, nagkasakit pa ang pamilya mo. You know, you are in the situation that you don't know where to go, but there is a manna from heaven that will sustain you, but you don't know what it is. Kasi yung mana, pwedeng maging adobo yan, maging kari-kari yan, di ba? Maging yung, yung mana, okay? Yan po ay pwedeng kahit ano, but they don't know what is it. Alam niyo po ba, I was in that situation of my life. After the world, okay, after Egypt ng buhay ko, which is 14 years, I spent 5 years in Texas, sa Amerika. And it is a place na ang aking kinakain doon is what is it? Ano ba yun? Because, you know, sa Pampanga po noon, nung ako po'y nagpapastor noong 2007, 8, and 9, ako po'y nagpipreach, ako po'y nagsisell group, you know, I'm active, I'm driving everywhere, and then suddenly, when, when I got to America, or sa US, you know, the first two years, I cannot even serve, I cannot even preach. And, you know, it is a place of, what is this? Mana ang nasa harapan ko. And sometimes, God will change the diet of Junel so that he will humble himself before God, so that he will become a person na tatanggap ng, ng criticism, constructive criticism, tatanggap siya ng, uh, ng pagbabago sa kanyang buhay. You know why? Because the manna will equip you. The manna will equip you. Dadaling ka niya sa isang sitwasyon na sasabihin mong Panginoon. <sighs> Wala nang garlic, praise God. Wala na yung yung uh, onions. Pero Lord, wala na yung mga mababaho sa buhay ko and now you planted me in this church and you gave me the mana. Okay. Salamat Lord. Pero alam niyo ba, ang mana sa una lang yan, exciting. Yan. Parang yung, yung ngayon, ka, nanood ka, at masaya ka. Wow! Yung City Sanctuary El Shalom nasa, nasa YouTube na. Wow! Nasa FB na. Praise God! Nanunod ka first week, second week, third week, fourth week, wala ka na. Or fourth week, five minutes ka lang nanood. Tapos hindi mo na tinapos. Fifth week, one minute ka na lang nanood. Sixth week, you were nowhere to found. You were, no, you, you were nowhere. Hindi ka na makita. To find, I may say. Now, Dapat, kapag tinanggap mo yung phase 2 o yung mana ng buhay mo, huwag, mong, huwag kang magreklamo, 
Huwag mong sabihin ano ba yung water baptism na yan, ba yung vision na yan, hindi ko maintindihan ano ba yung Holy Spirit. Because those are the, the big what is it ng buhay mo. What is this mana? But God has you right where He wants you. Dinala ka ni Lord sa place of wilderness. Dinala ako ni Lord dun sa Texas, Macallan, Texas, because that is where He wants me to be formed. That is the training place. That is the preparation of Junel. And now, Pastor Junel. Amen. Hallelujah. Then comes phase three. Yung phase three ng Bansang Israel, they, they went, they are about to enter, you know, the promised land. Suddenly, the manna stopped. Nawala ning manna. Remember, God will constantly change your diet and my diet. So dito, biglang nawala yung mana. And, you know, para, kay, para sa mga Israelita, yung, yung comfortable na sila na paggising nila, may pagkain, di ba? Paggising mo, mayroong, uh, dun sa ano mo, dun sa yung uh, uh, monoblock, mayroong ano, bigas, di ba? Dun sa monoblock mo, mayroong kang pagkain dun. Tapos may kakatok, okay? Di magbibigay sila ng ayuda, magbibigay sila ng uh, sap. Yan, yan yung mga panahon na may mana ka. Okay? But listen to this. There will come a time in your life after the ECQ, MECQ, GCQ that we need to go to our next phase. We call it eat whatever you saw. Kainin mo kung ano ang yung itinanim. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> so si Pastor Junel, after five years, five years po sa Amerika, lahat ng aking preparation na ginawa ni Lord sa akin, ito po ay akin ng ginamit. And when I got here in the Philippines in 2013, I started planting, planting, sowing, sowing, non-stop. Alam niyo po yung tanging pera namin noon, I remember. Hindi ko po ito pinagmamalaki, but you know, I just want to thank God that I was able to do it. Yung amin pong uh, dinalang pera ni Pastora Luke, ito po'y ginamit namin sa gawain ng Panginoon. We planted, we planted. And when we planted, we reap a harvest of plenty. Amen. Sometimes, you need to understand the power of the fruit of the ground. In the phase three of your life, you need to do something. Nung bata ka, ikaw sinusubuan ka. Nung ikaw ay nagbinata, ikaw nang kumakain pero nakikikain ka pa sa nanay mo. Nung ikaw ay nagkatrabaho, ikaw na ngayon ang magbibigay sa nanay mo. Are you following my friends? God changed the diet of the nation Israel. You know why? Because He wants them to become groundbreaker. Everybody say the word groundbreaker. Ano ang gusto sabihin nito? You need to toil the ground. You need to break the ground. You need to sow. It's time. Panahon na para ikaw at ako magtatanim tayo. Because kung anong tinanim mo ngayon, yun ang kakainin mo bukas. Amen po ba tayo doon? This is my declaration that every El Shalom and City Sanctuary disciple will become a groundbreaker. Because whatever you are willing to sow, it is what you will eat. Parang ganito yun, mga kapatid. Sa ating buhay, Kristiyano, there will come a time na tapos na yung kinoconsolidate ka. Tapos na yung ikaw yung lagi nilang, oh, kumusta ka na, binibigyan ka pa ng pangload. You know? ikaw, ikaw, yung, uh, ikaw yung sinusundo. This is the time na yung Christian life mo, your Christian walk is not up to God anymore. It's up to you. Kung paano mo gagambuli ni Kukultivate yung buhay mo, yung itinanim mo, ginambol mo, ano po, yan ay tinubigan mo, and then one day, yung relationship mo kay Lord, hindi na magiging isang simpleng relationship. So from faith to faith, that's why it demands faith now. Everybody say the word faith now. Sa panahon na nasa MECQ tayo, papunta sa GCQ, at anumang pong mga transitions, anumang pong crossing over, anumang pong mga tinatawag nating faces na paparating, we need what we call faith now. Why? Because your comfortable level in the new phase of your life 
must be challenged. China challenge ng Panginoon ng bawat isa sa atin. Komportable ka. Oo. Pero hanggang komportable ka sa mana, phase one, phase two, hindi mo mararanasan yung fruitfulness ng buhay mo. Because your fruitfulness is linked to your discomfort zone. Did you hear me? Your fruitfulness is linked. Ito po ay nakalink sa yung discomfort zone. Kapag hindi mo na inihintay yung ayuda, yung sap, yung relief, at ngayon ikaw na, ako naman ang magbibigay, you know what? That is fruitfulness. That is multiplication. That's why the Bible says that in verse 20, uh, I'm sorry, verse 5 ng Psalms 126, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Wow! Ngayon, discomfort ang nararanasan mo kasi hindi na ikaw ang tumatanggap. Ikaw na ang nagbibigay. Umiiyak ka ngayon, pero bukas ikaw naman ang pagpapalain at tutulungan. In Proverbs 20 verse 4, ang sabi dito, The lazy man will not plow because of winter. He will beg during harvest and have nothing. Kaya mga kapatid, sa bagong face ng ating buhay, we need to sow, we need to plant. Everybody say amen to that. Ano nyo darating sa buhay natin, nasasabihin ni Lord, wala nang mana. Because I am changing the game. I'm gonna bring you to your place of discomfort. Why? Because right there at your place of discomfort comes fruitfulness. Ang tawag ko po dun sa tutubo at ang tawag ko dun sa ating ipoplow, isosow, iririp, ito pong ating kukunin na ito ng mga bunga. I call them the food of freedom. Everybody say, food of freedom. Amen. Praise God. So in other words, as you start planting today, Tomorrow, you will be comfortful. Amen? So, another phase sa buhay po ni, ni Joshua. Okay, iiwanan ko muna po yung mga, yung mga phases. Alam niyo po si Pastor Junel, ngayon po nasa Pilipinas na ako. I am reaping a harvest of plenty. Mga kaluluwa sa buhay po namin pamilya. You know, from Egypt, dinala ako ni Lord sa wilderness. That's okay in Texas. But then God brought me to my Canaan. It is a place of conquest in my life. It is a place of fruitfulness. And I am declaring in the name of Jesus, kung nalito-lito ka sa mga paces ng buhay mo ngayong panahon na ito, God will bring you into the promises that He has for you. And in those, with those promises, you will become fruitful. Come on, receive it in your heart. And you will multiply. You know what? Multiplication and fruitfulness, naririnig natin lagi yan sa G12. But listen to this, that is the mandate, that is the original design of God in our lives. Everybody say amen to that. But number two, phases of life not only requires power, you know, relationship, but it requires alignment to the Word of God. Everybody say alignment. So makikita po natin dito sa verse 13. Okay? Nung nagkita si Joshua at yung angel of God, okay, then Joshua asked the angel, nagtanong yung angel sa, sa, pang, sa, si Joshua, I may say, sa angel. I'm sorry about that, okay? Sabi niya, are you for us or are you for our enemies? There you go. Ulitin ko po, okay? Nagtanong si Joshua sa angel at tinanong niya ang anghel. Sabi niya, kasama, ba, kasama ka ba namin? O ikaw ay kalaban namin. You know what the angel said? Neither. Everybody say the word neither. Neither means hindi ko sila, hindi ko sila kasama at hindi kita kasama. If you want God on your side, you better get on God's side because He is not on your side or their side. Ano gusto ko sabihin sa dito mga kapatid? Our God is on His side. 
Walang kinikilingan si Lord. Sabi ng anghel, hindi ako para sa inyo, hindi ako para sa kanila. Para ako sa akin. I am on my side. I have my own agenda. I have the will of God in my life. Okay? You know what? Listen to me. If you want God to be on your side, be on His side. Align to the agenda of God. Align to the will of God. Align ka sa word ni Lord. If you want God on your side, be on His side. Everybody say amen to that. Kasi si Lord, hindi niya kikilingan ang mga negatibong mga bagay mo. Hindi komo Christian ka, tinawag kang Christian. Hindi mo tinawag kang anak, anak ka ng Panginoon because you know, you go to church. That God is on your side. If you are not aligned to the Word of God, the face of your life will become miserable. Magiging miserable ang buhay mo. You know why? Because you don't know how to align to the Word of God. The Bible says that Joshua surrendered to the leadership of the angel. Now, many of you are listening to me. May position ka. Ikaw ay isang professional. You can say, kaya ko to. Kaya ko ang aking buhay. It doesn't matter kung meron nangyaring ganito. But listen to me. Joshua, he was the commander in chief of the nation of Israel, pero ang sabi ng salita ng Panginoon, siya po ay nagpakumbaba, nagsurrender siya sa leadership ng commander of heavens, of the army of God. Dapat ikaw at ako, magpakumbaba tayo, magsurrender tayo sa leadership ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo. You know why? Because only Jesus can lead you to the promised land. Only Jesus can lead you to the promised land. Kaya sabi ni, jo- ni Joshua, Lord, I am on your side. I am with you. And you know what? Victory came to the nation of Israel. Align yourself to the word of God in the face of your life. Everybody say amen to that. And then thirdly, and this is the last one, Faces of life requires worship. Ang mga yugto ng buhay, nangangailangan niya ng pagsamba. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, tingnan po natin to. So he said, No, but the commander of the army of the Lord, you know, I have come now. And the Bible says, Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worship. Ano daw ang ginawa ni Joshua? Everybody see the word worship. Sumamba siya. And said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Joshua fell on his face and worshiped the Lord. Nice kung makita nyo ang revelasyon o kapahayagan ng salita ng Panginoon. Before Joshua chapter 6, I call it now Jericho. Papasok na sila sa Jericho. They will conquer the land. There was a Joshua who fell face on the ground and worshipped. What do I mean with that? Sa faces, sa mga yugto, sa mga panahon ng ating buhay, worship is required. Come on, my friends. God is looking for worshipers who will worship in spirit and in truth. Now, ang sabi po ni, ng anghel kay Joshua, take off your shoes and stay a while. Take off your shoes. Now, bakit, bakit kailangan tanggalin yung sapatos aside sa holy ground? You know, because that place is a holy ground. Now look at me into the eyes. Kasi nais ko pong maintindihan mo ito at pakinggan mo ako kapatid. Okay? Tanggalin mo ang yung mga sapatos. Okay? Ang mga sandalas mo. You know why? Because whenever your shoes or your sandals are out, your feet are sensitive. They are sensitive. What do I mean with that, my friends? You can feel everything. You can discern 
I am aware of your presence, Lord. I want to experience your presence, God. Nagiging sensitive ka, naintindihan mo, nararamdaman mo yung, yung ginagawa ng Panginoon sa panahon ng pandemya. Na, na, nagiging sensitive ka sa kanyang mga whispers, yung mga bulong ng Diyos. Why? Because you don't have shoes. Because when you don't have shoes, your feet are sensitive. They can discern, my friends. Are you there? That's why sabi ng angel, take off your shoes and stay right there. You know why he wants us to stay home? Everybody say the word, stay home. I know you are a busy person, sabi ni Lord kay Joshua. I know you are about to conquer Jericho. I know that you are the commander-in-chief of, of Israel. But stay right there. Parang sinasabi ni Lord, stay home ka muna. Diyan ka lang. Huwag kang aalis dyan. Tanggalin mo yung sapatos mo at sambahin mo ako. Parang sinasabi ni Lord, be sensitive of my move because the face of your life, the seasons of your life, the crossing, the transitions of your life, you need to become sensitive. Don't go anywhere. Don't be busy. Stay where you are. Then I'm gonna give you instructions. Ano yung mga kapatid? Nagtagumpay. Si Joshua. Under the leadership of this man who is sensitive and who knows how to discern the signs of the times, he was able to conquer the entry point of the promised land. They call it Jericho. Kapatid, meron kang sariling Jericho sa buhay mo. Bibigyan ka ni Lord ng breakthrough at papasukan mo ang promotion mo, papasukan mo yung, yung love life na yan na ibibigay ni Lord sa'yo, that godly marriage, papasukan mo yung lahat ng pangangailangan ng buhay mo, ipoprovide ni Lord. Your Jericho, the walls of Jericho, they will break down. Why? Because your feet, they don't have shoes because you are sensitive. You stay home and listen to the Word of God. Amen. And that right now, you are in a place that you're saying, God, I depend on you. Lord, excited ako sa GCQ, pero MECQ ngayon, sabi ni Lord, mag-worship ka muna. Kasi tuwing linggo, dati, lagi kang nasa picnic, swimming, lahat, sinehan, hindi ka nag-church, kaya i-MECQ muna kita. Hanggang matuto kang mag-worship sa akin. Hanggang matuto kang mag-stay home. Hanggang matuto kang maging sensitive sa aking boses. I will make you stay there because the phases of life requires worship. Power relationship. Everybody say amen to that. Develop worship at home. You know, yun po yung aking testimony ngayon pong uh, dumating na GECQ na ito. That I was able to worship every single day with my family on a Friday with mom and dad Si Jaser and even si Pastora Jen, we have our worship time, you know, every single day. Alam, mo, alam niyo po, merong listahan si Destiny Janel ng mga inaawit naming mga kanta. Alam niyo po, tuwan-tuwa ako because right now, yung aking anak, meron siyang passion sa worship. Everybody say amen to that. At palakpan po natin natin, Panginoon. Praise God. You know what? After this pandemic, God will take you to places you've never been before. Why? Because you learn how to worship at home and you learn how to discern the signs of the times because your ears are open. I'm going to end up with this one. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 1, tignan po natin ang salita ng Panginoon. Now Jericho. Everybody say the word, now Jericho. It's not tomorrow Jericho. It's not 10 years after Jericho. You know what's Jericho? Yan ang place of breakthrough mo. Woo! Hallelujah! Si hindi ting excited sa Jericho ng buhay mo. Si hindi ting excited ka na paglabas mo sa pandemic na ito. God will play you to, take you to places that you've never been before. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Did you know that when God brings you to a new phase of your life, God will use Rahab's. 
yung mga rehab na tutulong sa'yo para dalin ka sa pangako ng Panginoon. And sometimes you may ask, prophet ba siya, pastor ba siya? Sino si Rehab? Siya ba ay isang evangelist? Siya ba isang, you know, mayaman na tao? No. He's not a prophet. She is not a prophet, I may say. She is not a pastor. She was a prostitute. Yan, sinasabi ko. Gagamit si Lord na mga taong hindi mo inaasahan na magdadala sa iyo sa promises ni Lord. But you need to be sensitive. That's why take off your shoes. Be sensitive because you can feel the presence of God. Because you can hear the voice of the Lord. Be sensitive, my friends. There are people that God will use with a power relationship para daling ka niya i-cross over ka mula sa wilderness ng buhay mo. Papunta sa pangako ng Panginoon sa iyo. But sometimes God will also use Rahab's na wala namang kinalaman sa Panginoon but God will use them so that you can cross over. But you need to be sensitive. Ngayon pong time ng pandemic, hindi ko kayo masisi, masisi. Some of you nakakaranas po kayo ng mga negatibong mga kaisipan patungkol sa buhay because you are still in the diet of Egypt. Whatever you take in, yun ang, mga, ang lalabas sa bibig mo, yan ang ipopost mo sa Instagram, yan ang ipopost mo sa Facebook, yan ang lalabas sa bibig mo. And sometimes they think, in the name of Jesus, I cut off right now. The spiritual garlics and the spiritual onions of life, we call, it, we call them the bondage food. You are no longer in bondage in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the commander-in-chief of, of the army of God is your God. Sa lahat ng mga sa unang pagkakataon ngayong oras na ito, kayo po ay nanood ng ganitong klaseng mensahe. Sabi ng ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo that I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14 verse 6, No one comes to the Father except by me. Sabi ni Yeso Kristo. If you want to go from one face to another face, you need the Lord Jesus Christ. Kailangan mo ang Panginoong Yeso Kristo. I was in the face of my 14 years ng aking buhay sa mundo. But listen to me, my friends. Nung ako po'y nakakilala sa ating Panginoong Yeso Kristo, yung dating drug addict, wasak na buhay na si Junel, laos na model, muling pinanumbalik ng Panginoon. First, He redeemed me, and then He renewed my mind. And then, pinanumbalik niya, He restored everything that the enemy has stolen by life. Pwede po bang tumayo tayong lahat ngayon? Right at your home and wherever you are, I want you to raise your hand to Jesus. Yung lahat ng mga gustong tumanggap kay Yesu Cristo bilang tagapagligtas at Diyos ng kanilang buhay. Nais ko pong sumunod ka sa panalangin na ito. Just raise your hand to the Lord. Huwag kang mahihiya sa katabi mo kasi walang nakakahiya na ikaw ay tatanggap kay Yesu Cristo. Now, sabay-sabay po natin sabihin ito. Panginoong Heso Kristo, tinatanggap ko na ako isang makasalanan. Sa umagang ito, patawarin mo ko sa lahat ng aking pagkakasala. Binubuksan ko ang pintuan ng aking puso. Jesus, Pumasok ka sa aking buhay. Maghari ka. At sa araw na ito, ikaw na ang tagapagligtas at Diyos ng aking buhay. Ito po ang aking panalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen. Now everybody who's listening right now to this streaming, I want you to open your mouth. I want the music to come up right now. I want everybody who is tuned in to this, to this message. I want you to begin to praise Him. Get a praise leap right now in your mouth and begin to worship Him. 
Take off your sandals. Take off your shoes. Worship me, sabi po ng angel. Worship the Lord right now. Right where you are. Where you are. Begin to tell Him, Hallelujah. 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 Come on, everybody in this place, worship God. Bless Him right now. Bless Him right now. Tell Him that you love Him. Tell Him that you worship Him. Sinasamba kita, Panginoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sige po, sambahin natin si Lord right now. And hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship Him. This is your place of a new phase of your life. Kung ikaw ay nag- the transition mula dito sa ECQ, MECQ, GCQ from your life to this place from the wilderness right here at the place they call it the promised land you need to worship because the phases of life requires worship come on hallelujah hallelujah say hallelujah Lord I sing to you I sing to you Lord a hymn of for your faithfulness. For your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. I'm carried in everlasting arms. You'll never you let me never let me go. And I'll sing to you, Lord. Come on, lift your voices. I hear To me, I'm carried in. I'm carried in everlasting arms. You never let me go through it all. Now, every person in this place right now, and every person who are tuned into this live streaming. I want you to lift your hands. Continually lift your hands to Jesus. Ano mang yugto ng buhay mo? Ano mang panahon na kung saan ikaw ay nafo-frustrate? Nawawalan ka ng gana sa mga pangyayari. Let me tell you, if you will worship, if you will follow a person with a powerful relationship with God, if you will begin to tell God, Lord, I'm going to shift from one face to another face. I want to tell you and I want to guarantee right now. If you are sensitive and you can discern the signs of the times. And if you can hear the whispers of God. Because right now you got this message. Natanggap mo itong mensahe nito. The Lord will never leave you. And He will never Sama natin ang Panginoon sa lahat ng yugto ng ating buhay. And believe me, my friends, from Egypt to the wilderness, God will bring you to the promised land. The promise of God is yours. Claim it right now. Yes, Lord, we receive all the promises. We receive, Lord, that this pandemic will be over. Come on, receive it right now. We receive for a vaccine. We receive, Lord, for healing upon our family. Come on, begin receive right, to receive right now. Lord, we receive for financial breakthrough. Lord, we receive for a power relationship between husband and wife and our children. God, we receive it because today, God, worship is present. A power relationship is present. And Father, naniniwala po kami that you are with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Jesus. We honor you. Lord, we will align our lives to your, to your word. Because God, when we are aligned to your word, you are with us. Thank you, Father. Sa umagang ito, because in this phase of life, we need to align to the Word of God. The Word of God says in the book of 1 Corinthians that we need to remember. 
Everybody say the word remember. You know what? What remember means? Re is again. Member is to become a member of the family of God. All of us, we were dismembered. Lahat tayo, one day because of sin in our lives, we were dismembered. Nawala po tayo sa pagkaka, pagkaka membro sa katawan niya sa Kristo ng dahil sa kasalanan. But whenever we take the cup and the bread, which is the Holy Communion, tayo pumili ay nagiging membro ng katawan ni Yesu Kristo. That's why we are going to observe the Holy Communion this morning. At nais ko pong ihanda natin ang ating saro at ang ating tinapay. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 26, the Bible says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread. And in verse 24, the Bible says that when He had given thanks, He broke it. And He had given thanks. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. And whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Whenever you, whenever you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Habang pong uh, piniprepare nyo and you distrib- you're distributing the bread, and the wine. I, I just want to give you some insights. In the book of Leviticus 17, makikita po natin that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Itong katawan na ito, ang kanyang buhay ay nasa dugo. That's why we can never separate the flesh, which is the bread, from the blood. We need the precious blood of Jesus Christ in our lives so that our flesh will have life. Through the precious blood of Jesus, we can receive an eternal life. Kaya walang kahit isa sa atin ang pupunta sa impyerno. Lahat tayo mabubuhay. Because when you begin to remember the precious blood of Jesus, and his body that was bruised, we are being remembered to the body of Christ. Itaas po natin ang tinapay sa oras na ito. I want to read again that verse. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do it in remembrance of me. Sabay-sabay po tayong kumain sa oras na ito. Come on, begin to thank him. Worship Him. Let there be a power relationship right now because we are remembering. Inaalala natin ang ginawa ng ating Panginoong Iso Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Itaas po natin ang saro. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. And whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Sabay-sabay po tayong minum ng saro. Everybody in this place, and those who are in their homes, lift your hands right now. Worship the Lord and tell Him, Lord, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done at the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Father, that you have given us hope in the new faces of our lives. Why? Because you gave your life for us. Thank you for the blood that was shed at the cross. Na ngayong oras na ito, we have the assurance that we will endure this race of life. So, Father, we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, 
Amen. Amen. Pwede bang palakpakan natin ang Panginoon? Come on. 10 seconds na palakpak para kay Lord. Right there where you are. Praise Jesus. Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord.